Hello, my name is Ziad Shakir, and I work at the Irving Independent School District at the Academy. And I'm here today to talk to you about a common physics uh, concept that I teach in my classroom uh, called two-dimensional motion. Now, part of the Texas TEKS uh, requires us that we teach high school students to understand concepts associated with motion. And one of the more complex uh, types of motion are those involving two-dimensional motion. And two-dimensional motion is basically a motion that is associated with objects that you throw up in the air and eventually land back onto the ground. What makes them particularly complex is the fact that uh, they involve two uh, uh, dimensions. And we can describe that best by using a math concept, uh, the vector concept. Uh, from mathematics. And as you can see in the diagram here, there are two vector components acting on the speed of the object. Uh, for starters, as the object makes its way towards the top, um, we can see that those two vectors change, and they don't change exactly in the same way. Uh, so we've got a, a vertical vector acting on the velocity or the speed of the object, and then we've got a horizontal vector acting on the object. Can you tell which of the two vectors uh, stays constant and which one changes? If you look closely at the diagram, you'll see that the uh, horizontal component of the vector pretty much stays constant throughout the motion of the object, whereas the um, vertical component uh, starts to lose magnitude as the object makes its way to the top or its highest point. We call that the maximum height that the object reaches, and then eventually starts to pick up speed again as it makes its way uh, to the ground. Uh, this is a typical example of a problem that requires two-dimensional analysis. Uh, in this particular example, you can see a football punter kick the ball. And if we look at the problem, we're given two pieces of information. One, uh, what the initial velocity of the object is. That reads 27 meters per second. And then we're also given what the angle by which the object is launched. And in this particular case, happens to be 30 degrees. A uh, typical problem would require a student to solve for the hang time. That's the total time that the object spends in the air. Of course, in the context of football, this is important because, as you know, for punters, it's important for them to know what the hang time is so that their team can get enough time to get down the field. Um, another typical question would involve calculating the range. And the range tells us how far, uh, in this particular case, the football will travel. And so let's look at uh, the solution to the problem. This is a multi-step process, and this is one of the areas where algebra becomes very important towards solving problems in physics. So you have to have a good command of algebra in order to uh, be able to solve these physics problems. And uh, here's a typical solution to that particular problem. As you can see here, it begins by calculating the two components of the velocity, that x and y component we talked about earlier, the horizontal and vertical components of the velocity. In this particular case, I've uh, gone through and showed you uh, the equations that we use to get the two component velocities. And again, this is a great example of how trigonometry now, another math uh, tool, it becomes very relevant towards solving physics problems. And so in this particular instance, we calculate the x component of the velocity to measure 29.4 and the y component of the velocity to be 13.5. Once we've determined the two components of the velocity acting on the uh, football in this particular case, we can calculate the hang time. And so that's that third bulletin point that you see. Um, so doing that and using that relationship for hang time, we determined that the total hang time of the football will be 2.76 seconds. And now that we've determined what the hang time is, we can use the range equation, which is that last equation that's shown there. Uh, another great example of algebra at work, we take the um, x component of the velocity times the hang time, and that will give us the range or how far this particular football will travel. Happens to be, in this example, to be a little under 65 meters.
So, real life applications of physics. Um, these types of calculations become relevant in sports. Uh, they can also be used in more serious applications like military applications that involve artillery or missiles. And in this particular case, um, coordinates have to be predetermined in order to determine um, where the, in the, for instance, a cannon has to be placed in order to hit a particular target. So as similar types of calculations that involve range and hang time and such. Well, that's the end of the two-dimensional uh, analysis problem, and this is hopefully just to give you a, uh, a short but quick preview of some of the uh, more challenging concepts that we teach in high school physics today and how mathematics plays a critical role in answering those. Thank you.